God had a plan. Moses was given the pattern. The people under two gifted men, Bezalel and Aholiab, were tasked with the project. The nation was called on to donate the provisions, treasures brought out of Egypt. It was time to begin building a dwelling for God. Normally, one of the first things those responsible for erecting a building would do is visit the construction site. However, in this case, the structure needed to adapt to the changing landscape because God was on the move. Earth would provide the floor, the court would be open to the heavens. The orientation of the building was important, however, with the entrance always facing the sunrise. The Egyptians professed to live for the afterlife, but they betrayed themselves. Their cities were on the sunrise side of the Nile, their tombs on the sunset side. How important for God's people to live in light of the blessed hope and the glorious day to follow when he enters the Eastern Gate and claims his kingdom at last. We can't help but see in the general layout of this three-part structure a pattern of our approach to God. We come by virtue of the person and work of Christ as seen in the great bronze altar and labor in the court. However, our continued access is through the ministry of the Spirit. Note the oil fueling the lampstand and fellowship in the Spirit at the table. And the destination? Into the holiest of all we come, to the Father. Finding both the gold altar, see Hebrews 9, 1 to 5, and the Ark of the Covenant. As the Lord Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. However, quote, when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Chapter 15, verse 26. You see the process? The Spirit delights to reveal the Son to us. The Son is the one who reveals the Father. So, in the court, the essential elements were blood and water. In the holy place, it was light and bread. In the holiest, incense and glory. In the court, we see the ongoing value of the once for all work of Christ in his people. In the holy place, it's the ongoing illuminating and sustaining ministry of Christ by his spirit through his people. In the holiest of all, it is the ongoing work of the Lord Jesus for his people in the presence of his Father in heaven. What was the building called? It was the tabernacle of the Lord, 1 Samuel 3, verse 3, where God had a home on earth. His sanctuary, Exodus 25, verse 8, the place of his holiness. It was the tabernacle of the congregation, or tent of meeting, Exodus 27, verse 21, where God communed with his people. It was the tabernacle of witness, number 17, verses 7 and 8, or of testimony, where the tables of the law were stored, God's truth declared, and his people instructed. It is the house of Jehovah, Exodus 23, 19. Whatever the title used, this was the opposite of the building project at Babel. There they said, quote, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven, and let us make us a name. Genesis 11, verse 4. Bab-el means the gate to God, but Babel means confusion. False religion is man reaching up his own way, but this is God coming down from heaven to dwell among his people. Thus the encouragement from the psalmist, quote, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? 
He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Psalm 15, verses 1 and 2. Through Christ, God welcomes us home.